All right, folks, we're getting ready to start the last topic here in Applied Calculus, and the topic of Section 8.4 is maxima and minima, or relative maximums, relative minimum. The objectives we're going to look at here in Section 8.4 will be Objective 1, determining critical points, Objective 2, determine relative extrema, and, and Objective 3, uh, determine maximum revenue. Folks, similar to how we found extrema previously back in chapter five, uh, we will find relative maxima and relative minima for surfaces. So these are, you know, surfaces, remember graphs of these functions that are in three space. So if you're given a function of two variables, we assume that all second order partial derivatives exist uh, for f of x, y and some small circular region in the xy plane, which guarantees we are dealing with what is called a smooth surface. Now, a smooth surface is a surface that has no edges, sharp points, or breaks. I mean, here's a figure. This is from your book, figure 8.4.1. Notice in figure A, the surface uh, has an edge. Well, it has more than one edge. In B, the surface has a sharp point. And in C, the surface has a break. We're not going to worry about any of those situations at all. Uh, we're we're going to just be dealing with what's known as a smooth surface. So that, that's good for us. We don't have to worry about these uh, uh, situations where we'd have an edge, a sharp point, or a break. Okay, here's the definition of a relative extrema in three space. So you have a function of two variables. The value f of a, b, a is a number, b is a number, it is a relative maximum if f of a, b is greater than or equal to f of x, y for all points x, y in some circular region in the x, y plane around this point a, b. Remember, a, b would be living in the x, y plane. And that point a, b is the center of the circular region. So here's a picture. You see AB that's in the XY plane, its Z coordinate would be zero. So there's a circular region there and that point at the top, AB, F of AB, that's a maximum. Well, the point A or F of AB is a relative minimum if F of AB is less than or equal to F of XY. For all points XY in some circular region in the XY plane around the point AB, where AB is the center of the circular region. So here's a picture of what that would look like. So that is technically speaking the definition of a relative maximum and a relative minimum. Um, hopefully there'll be a nice way for us to classify relative maxes and relative mins. That circular region, it should be small to ensure only one relative extrema is enclosed. However, in some situations, such as what is called a saddle point, there is no circular region that will make this point the relative maximum or relative minimum. So this figure showing you what a saddle point looks at looks like. You know, you look at the point A, B, F of A, B, um, no, matter, no matter where you look around that point, there will be a point that's a little bit higher than that point and there will be a point that's a little bit lower than that point. So a saddle point is called a saddle point because it kind of takes the structure of a horse's saddle. Uh, so if you look at a, a horse, a saddle that you would put on a horse, uh, where you sit, where your butt would be, that is the saddle point. There are points that are lower than that. That'd be like where your legs go off to the side. And there would be points that are higher in front of you and behind you. So that's why it's called a saddle point. We're not going to have any care about a saddle point because it's not a relative max, nor is it a relative min. All right, folks, in, in chapter five, we said that a critical value of a function of one variable, it was a number that made the derivative of the function equal to zero or where the derivative did not exist. So you remember that in chapter five, a critical value was where the derivative equals zero or where the derivative does not exist. Well, there are way too many possibilities for a function of two variables to have 
critical points. So we're going to limit our discussion as the point AB is a critical point for f of x, y if the partial with respect to x of AB equals 0 and the partial with respect to y of AB equals 0. So in essence, you know, now we're talking about critical points, not values. AB is a point in the xy plane. So we're only going to be interested in critical points where the partial with respect to x equals 0 and the partial with respect to y equals 0. So this kind of gives us our game plan. To find critical points, we're going to find the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to y. And we're going to set each of those partials equal to 0 and to determine our critical point. So let's look at doing this in an example. Determine the critical points for this function. Uh, so please write it down in your notes because, you know, I'm going to head off to the chalkboard to do it. All right, in this example, we were asked to find the critical point or critical points for this function. And to do that, we need to get the partial derivative with respect to x and the partial derivative with respect to y and set each of those partial derivatives equal to 0. So let's start off by getting the partial derivative with respect to x. Remember, to get the partial derivative with respect to x, you pretend y is a constant and differentiate normally. So the derivative here is negative 4x. That's a constant. Derivative of a constant is 0. The derivative of 4x is 4. That's a constant. Derivative of a constant is 0. And the derivative of a constant is 0. So that's the partial with respect to x. The partial derivative with respect to y, remember, we pretend x is a constant. So this would be a constant. The derivative would be 0. Uh, this derivative, well, that's negative 2y. Constant, derivative is 0. Derivative here, minus 6. And then, well, that's a constant. The derivative is 0. So you have to take both partial derivatives and set equal to 0. Then if you solve this for x, you're going to get x equals 1. And if you solve this for y, you're going to get y equals negative 3. So that tells us that the critical point is the point 1, negative 3. Remember that point's left, it's in the xy plane. So you go to the point 1, negative 3, and the graph of this beastie is some surface in space. At the point 1, negative 3, you go there, and that z coordinate, it might be a maximum, it might be a minimum, it might be neither of those, um, and that's what we're going to analyze later on in this section. Is it producing a max, a min, or neither a max nor a min, which is called a saddle point. But first we have to do a little bit more practice in finding critical points. So I would like you all to try number eight. So you know the drill. Pause the video, try number eight, then restart the video, and I'll be here at the board working through it. All right, folks, at number eight you were given that function of two variables, and you were asked to find... Uh, the critical points. So you need to get the partial with respect to x and the partial with respect to x is uh, 2x see that would be 0 minus 6 0 0 so that's the partial with respect to x the partial with respect to y uh, see that would be 0 so we'd have a 2y uh, 0 minus 4. You set each partial equal to 0. Solve for x, you get x is 3. Solve for y, you get y is 2. So the critical point 
is three, two. So hopefully you got that. And you're hopefully seeing these aren't too bad. So let's head on back to the slides and see uh, what's next. All right, after finding critical points for that example, as well as uh, number eight, hopefully you see it's not too bad of a process. Um, but I do want to do one more example before we move on. Determine the critical points for this function. Um, I mean, here we have to, what we're going to see when I work this out on the board is we need to remember one little technique uh, from algebra and, um, and, and eventually getting the critical point. So write this example down. I'm going to head off to the chalkboard and do this one. All right, that quick trip back to the slides. It's like, let's do another example of finding uh, critical points. Process doesn't change. Find the partial with respect to x. And that's a 2x. See, that would be 0. Uh, so mm, when I find the derivative here, remember y is a constant. So the derivative of x is 1. So 1 times that constant y gives me a y. Minus 3, constant, constant. So those derivatives are 0. Partial with respect to y. Well, here x is a constant. That'd be 0. That's a 2y. Okay, remember x is a constant. So the derivative, I cover it up, it's a constant. The derivative of y is 1. So 1 times that constant, that gives me a minus x. Uh, constant, so that's 0. Uh, minus 3. So we set each partial equal to 0. And we have just a little bit more work than we did in the prior example and number 8 that we did. Um, each one of those equations has two variables in it. So I need to remember a technique from algebra on how to solve, how to get what's called a simultaneous solution. And the, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to review the technique you would have learned way back then called the substitution method. In other words, look at this equation. I can solve, I can take this equation and I can solve it for x or I could solve it for y. Likewise, this equation I could solve for x or I could solve for y. But I'm going to pick this equation and I'm going to solve it for y because it's really easy for me to do that. I just simply add y to both sides of the equation and that gives me y equals 2x minus 3. And then what I do is since I know y equals 2x minus 3, I take that 2x minus 3 and I substitute it into this equation for y. That's why it's called the substitution method. So that gives me 0 equals 2 times 2x minus 3 minus x minus 3. Now I have an equation with just one variable in it. I should be able to easily solve for x. So let's do it. Get a 4x minus 6 minus x minus 3. 0 equals a 3x minus 9. Add 9 to both sides. Divide both sides by 3. I get x is 3. So now all I need to do is get the y coordinate. I know x is 3. What is y? Well, I can take this value of 3 and I can substitute it in here. I can take this x is 3, toss it in here to tell me what y is. Or I could, why not just use this y equals 2x minus 3? Why not just toss the 3 in here? y equals 2 times 3 minus 3. y equals 3. So our critical point is 3, 3. Okay, I want you to get a little bit of practice with this, so uh, why don't you try number 16. So pause the video, try number 16. After you do 16, you know I'll be here at the board uh, working through the solution. All right, here number 16, you were asked to find the critical points for this function.
So we began by getting the partial derivatives. So the partial with respect to x is 4x plus the 2y plus 4. The partial with respect to y is 6y plus 2x minus 8. Set each partial equal to 0. Alright, so each equation involves two variables, x and y. So I'm going to do that substitution method. So I'm going to pick this equation, and I'm going to solve this equation for y. So I subtract 4x from both sides of the equation. Subtract 4 from both sides of the equation. So that gives me this. And now I divide both sides of the equation by 2. And I get negative 2x minus 2 is equal to y. So since y equals negative 2x minus 2, I'm going to take the negative 2x minus 2. And I'm going to substitute it in here for y. So that gives me 0 equals 6 times negative 2x minus 2 plus a 2x minus 8. Do a little distribution here to get a negative 12x minus 12 plus 2x minus 8. Combine like terms, so I have a negative 10x uh, minus 20. Add 20 to both sides and divide by negative 10, and I get x equals negative 2. So I take this x value of negative 2, and I'm going to toss it right in here. So I get a negative 2 times a negative 2 minus 2 is equal to y. That's 4 minus 2. So 2 is equal to y. So my critical point is negative 2, 2. All right, so now that we have finding critical points under control, let's head on back to the slides and let's see what is next. All right, after that last example and number 16, um, hopefully you're getting dialed in on how to find critical points. Remember, to find critical points, you have to take the partial with respect to x and set it equal to 0 and the partial with respect to y and set it equal to 0. So in chapter five, you know, we dealt with functions of one variable and similar to a function uh, of one variable, we're gonna use the second derivative test to determine whether we have a relative extrema at a given critical point. So this is how we're gonna classify if we have a second, if we have a, a, a relative max or a relative min. So here's the second derivative test. Z is a function of two variables and the second partial with respect to x, the second partial with respect to y, and the mixed partial, um, those, those beasties all exist. So if the partial with respect to x of AB is 0, and the partial with respect to y of AB is 0, in other words, AB is a critical point, we are going to define a number D to be, and here's how we define d. d is equal to the second partial with respect to x evaluated at the critical point a, b times the second partial with respect to y evaluated at the critical point a, b minus the mixed partial evaluated at the critical point a, b squared. So that's going to give us a number. And D, uh, that number, tells us, well, if D ends up being a positive number and the second partial with respect to X is less than AB, 
then f of ab is a relative maximum. If d is a positive number and the second partial with respect to x is positive, is greater than zero, then f of ab is a relative minimum. If d ends up being a negative number, well, then we don't have a max or a min. We just have a saddle point. And if by chance d equals 0, we have no idea what's going on. Um, the test here gives us no information about f of a, b. And for our purposes, if you end up with d equaling 0, you've probably made a mistake. So let's see how we can use um, or how we should apply the second derivative test, which sometimes I just call it the D test. So the first thing you want to do is you want to determine all critical points A, B. You want to get the second partial with respect to X, the second partial with respect to Y, and the mixed partial. You're going to even you're going to evaluate the second order partial derivatives at each critical point to, to determine D. This is key in determining D. For each critical point, you're going to get a, a D, what that number is. And then apply um, the conclusion of the second derivative test as seen on the previous slide. So for this function, let's determine the relative extrema. Um, please make a note or look in your notes. This was our first example. We determined the critical points for this function in the first example. So I'm going to head off to the board and try to determine if that critical point is producing a relative max, a relative min, or maybe it's a saddle point. And uh, we'll see how to use the, uh, the second derivative test or the D test to do that. Hey folks, in this example, we're asked to determine the relative extrema for that function. And, you know, I mentioned this in the, in the slide. This was the same function that we saw in the very first example uh, that we did in this video. So in that first example, we determined the partial with respect to X, the partial with respect to Y, and we determined 1, negative 3 was the critical point. So now we're going to see, does that critical point produce a relative max, a relative min, or maybe does it produce a saddle point? So what we need to do, we need to get the second partial with respect to x. So in order to do that, remember, you look at the partial with respect to x, and you're going to differentiate that with respect to x. So you pretend y is a constant. There are no y's, so we just get the derivative, the second partial with respect to x to be negative 4. We have to get the second partial with respect to y. So that means you take the partial with respect to y, now differentiate it with respect to y, and you get a negative 2. And you also need to compute this mixed partial. So remember on the mixed partial, you're going to take the partial with respect to x, so here it is, and now you're going to differentiate this with respect to y. So when you differentiate this with respect to y, you pretend x is a constant. So that would be a constant, the derivative is 0, that's a constant, the derivative is 0. So this mixed partial is 0. So now I need to crank this through uh, the second derivative test, or a lot of times I just call it the D test. I do this just to keep my, uh, um, my notes straight. It's like bookkeeping. I'm first analyzing, I'm just going to analyze D at the critical point, 1, negative 3. So the D test would look like this. I have to evaluate the second partial with respect to x at 1, negative 3, times the second partial with respect to y. I have to evaluate it at 1, negative 3, minus the mixed partial evaluated at 1, negative 3, squared. So I have to look at the second partial with respect to x, 
and I'm going to put 1 in for the x's, negative 3 in for the y's. Well, no matter what x is and no matter what y is, the second partial with respect to x is just a negative 4. So this is negative 4. Likewise, I evaluate the second partial with respect to y at 1, negative 3. So I'm putting 1 in for the x's, negative 3 in for the y's. No matter what x and y is, the second partial with respect to y is negative 2. And likewise, evaluate the mixed partial at 1, negative 3. And no matter what x is, no matter what y is, the mixed partial is 0. So we get d to be 8. That's a positive number. So since d is a positive number and the mix or the second partial with respect to x at 1 negative 3, well the second partial with respect to x evaluated at 1 negative 3, it was negative 4. It was a negative number. So it's a negative number. That tells us, thanks to the d-test, that we have a relative maximum at 1, negative 3, and more importantly, the relative maximum is the z-coordinate. So we need to get the z-coordinate. So you need to evaluate this function at 1, negative 3. You need to put 1 in for the x's, negative 3 in for the y's. And if you do that uh, correctly, you're going to get a z value of negative 5. Okay, that's it for this example. Let's head on back to the slides because I think we have another example. So um, let's go see what the next example is. All right, hopefully you saw using the d-test wasn't too bad. So here's another example. Uh, Going to do something a little different here for this example, though. Uh, what I would like you to do is I would like you to try to find the relative extrema for this function. So I'm going to ask you to pause the video and work it out. And once you've worked it out, I'll be at the board uh, and you can see if you did it correctly. I'll give you a hint here. You should get uh, two different critical points uh, for this. And one of the critical points um, is going to produce a saddle point. So pause the video, work it out, and when you're done, restart the video. I'll be at the board uh, cranking through this. All right, this example, I asked you to pause the video and work it out for yourself. I think I gave you a hint. I think I told you there would be two critical points. And I said uh, one of them actually uh, resulted in a saddle point. So uh, let's see if you're able to, to get all this information. So I began by getting the partial derivatives with respect to x and with respect to y. So the partial with respect to x is 3x squared plus 6x. The partial with respect to y is negative 2y plus 2. Okay, because I'm trying to find relative extrema, I know I'm going to need second partial derivatives as well as mixed partials. So while I'm here, I'm going to go ahead and get those uh, uh, second partials and the mixed partial. So the second partial with respect to x is 6x plus 6. The second partial with respect to y is just negative 2. And then the mixed partial, so I take the partial with respect to x, now I differentiate it with respect to y. Well, that's nothing but constants, so I get the mixed partial to be 0. Now let's find our critical points. So let, uh, let me come over here. To find the critical points, I have to take the partial with respect to x and set it equal to 0. 
partial with respect to y and set it equal to zero. Well, this immediately tells me that y is equal to one. Here, well, I could factor out a three x then set each factor equal to zero and I get x is zero and x is negative two. So I do have two critical points. They are 0, 1 and negative 2, 1. Two critical points. So I have two critical points that I have to crank through um, the D test. So let's do the critical point 0, 1 first. So D would equal the second partial with respect to X evaluated at 0, 1 times the second partial with respect to Y evaluated at 0, 1 minus the mixed partial evaluated at 0, 1 squared. So the second partial with respect to X evaluated at 0, 1 so I look at the second partial, I put 0 in for the x, 1 in for the y, there is no y. So I get the second partial with respect to x evaluated at 0, 1. I get that to be 6. The second partial with respect to y evaluated at 0, 1. Well, that's just negative 2. And the mixed partial, well, that's just 0. So 6 times negative 2 is negative 12. Negative 12 minus 0 is negative 12. Folks, D is negative 12. You know, D is negative. That implies we have a saddle point. That's not a max. That's not a min. It's just a saddle point. In fact, if I want to see the point itself, You know, I could put 0 back in here for the x's and 1 back in for the y's, and I get the saddle point is living in space at the point 0, 1, 5. We have one more critical point to check. So the other critical point is negative 2, 1. So the D test. Let me write down the D test for the critical point negative 2, 1. All right, so the second partial with respect to X evaluated at negative 2, 1. Well, here's the second partial with respect to X. It looks like, uh, it looks like that would give me a negative 6. Second partial with respect to Y evaluated at negative 2, 1. Well, that's negative 2. That's 0, so we get a value of 12. That's positive. So D is positive. And the second partial with respect to X evaluated at negative 2, 1. It was negative. So because we have D is positive, this is negative. That tells us, from the d-test, that tells us we have a relative maximum at negative 2, 1. And then the z-coordinate, you evaluate this function at negative 2, 1. So you put negative 2 in for the x's, 1 in for the y's. And you will get a z-coordinate to be... 9. Hopefully you were able to knock this example out. But let's head on back to the slides. I have a feeling the next thing we're going to look at is how to do this in an application. All right, hopefully you're able to get that last example. Um, so here we are. All of this is a build up to actually uh, do an application. So Access Rentals offers uh, rentals for cars and trucks. 
The revenue function in dollars is given by, well, you can see the revenue function. Here, X is the number of cars rented and Y is the number of trucks rented each week. And then the revenue function itself is in hundreds of dollars. Determine how many of each item should be rented weekly to maximize revenue. And then what is that maximum revenue? So make sure you write this down because uh, I'm heading off to the chalkboard to, to work through it. All right, folks, in this application, uh, uh, this was the function that was telling us revenue in dollars. Um, X is the number of cars rented, Y is the number of trucks rented. Actually, F of X, Y is in hundreds of dollars. Um, we were asked to determine how many of each item should be rented weekly to maximize revenue, and then what is the maximum revenue? So I guess we better find a critical point and then crank it through the D test. So to get the critical point, partial with respect to X is negative 2X plus 4. The partial with respect to Y is negative 2Y plus 6. Since I know I'm going to have to crank this through the D test, I'm going to go ahead and get the second partial with respect to x, since I'm here. That's a negative 2. The second partial with respect to y, uh, that's kind of cool. It's a negative 2. And then the mixed partial is 0. So now let's try to find the critical points. Remember, the critical point, you're going to take partial with respect to x, set it equal to 0. The partial with respect to y, set it equal to 0. And you get x is 2 and y, it, well, y is 3. So the only critical point is the point 2, 3. That better maximize the profit, but let's or maximize the revenue, but let's see if it really does. So for the critical point, two, three, let's crank it through the D test. So here I am just writing down the mechanics of doing the D test. So partial, the second partial with respect to x evaluated at 2, 3. Well, that's negative 2. Second partial with respect to y evaluated at 2, 3. Oh, that's negative 2. Mixed partial evaluated at 2, 3. Well, that's 0. So we get d is 4. d is greater than 0. And the second partial evaluated at 2, 3. Well, that was negative 2, so that's less than 0. That tells me that we have a relative max at the point 2, 3. And then I need to get the z coordinate, so I put 2 in for the x's, 3 in for the y's. And, oh, and I end up getting 14. So let's answer the question. How many of each item should be rented weekly to maximize revenue? Well, x is 2, y is 3. So that tells me that we maximize revenue renting See, X represented the number of cars. So two cars, Y was the uh, number of trucks, and three trucks weekly. And the maximum revenue is... 14. But remember, that was in uh, hundreds of dollars. F of X, Y was in hundreds of dollars. So the maximum revenue is $1,400.
that's it for section 8.4. So now you should head off and do the exercises in section 8.4. Thanks for watching.